guys, it's Lydia DeFrancesco. I'm one of the organizers for Italian Week here with Judith Cox. She is a master gardener. We're gonna actually get the full thing going on in a few minutes as we wait for more people to join. But while we get started, I actually wanna know, what is a master gardener? Like, this is actually a real thing. Yes, it is a real thing. It's, Tell me more. Well, I'm part of the Master Gardeners of Ottawa Carleton, and we are part of the Master Gardeners of Ontario. Okay. What that means is that I have to pass a specific qualification. Uh, I was uh, in training for two years before I was allowed to call myself a Master Gardener, mm -hmm. and I have to do ongoing training to keep up with things. Wow. We, we okay. are, so it's a very serious uh, are scientifically as much as possible. We just want to help gardeners how to garden. We go to um, farmer's markets uh, and um, for people who are interested in, in gardening. Mm -hmm. My thing is vegetables, but mm -hmm. we have members who specialize in other things like okay. roses and peonies and oh, wow. all these other and beautiful flowers. And some people are tree experts. So we have a whole a whole gamut of mm -hmm. interests and ideas. Great. Um, I have to do. I believe it's at least thirty volunteer hours a year. Uh, current. So and we're talking to the real deal here. We picked well, the right I, person. I love it. <laughs> Um, Amazing. I, I, I get a lot out of it. Yeah. But it's it's a real commitment. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like it. That's fantastic. So. And so today we're actually here in your front garden. We're at your house, and we uh, the other day when we came by, we saw your back garden, which is full of all sorts of stuff, plus mosquitoes. So we're staying yeah. out of there. <laughs> and uh, we're going to be here in the front garden. And yes. primarily today we're going to be talking about tomatoes. Yes. It's a very quintessential Italian gardening plant. Yes. Many people who are not Italian also try and do tomatoes and uh, we found that there's a lot of challenges with tomatoes, or there can be. So um, why don't you take us through the process? I don't know if you want to start from like let's, let's the beginning start from the beginning, and then kind of run people through and we have actually a little seedling that we're going to plant together. Yeah. Um, These were planted from seed. Okay. I put them in this little tray and put them under my lights and let them grow on. Usually I would have them planted by now. Mm -hmm. This was tucked in the back because <laughs> I'm not a good gardener. Uh -oh. and you... So if you are about to plant your tomato, mm -hmm. you very little cell. First. Yes. Should people wait when they plant from seed? Should they wait until it's a certain height? Good question. Now suppose your, your plant is only about this tall. Mm -hmm. That's a little tiny. Okay. You're going to start out your plant. It's going to get something called seed leaves. Okay. Two little leaves mm -hmm. are going to open up first. Or no. They're right at the top. Oh. Those two little leaves right there. Oh. That's usually how it then you get more leaves mm -hmm. and more leaves. Well, no, it's not at the top. I'm just sure. saying yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah. so your plant okay. will get more and more leaves. Mm -hmm. I like to make, make sure that there's at least that much of, of a seedling before it starts going on any okay. farther. So probably like a good six inches now, maybe? This or? particular plant is yeah. a tiny, tiny tomato. It's, okay. this, it's this big. Oh, okay. It's called a current tomato. So it will not get very big. So okay. pretend this is a regular tomato okay, in, yeah. in miniature. <laughs> it's also an indeterminate tomato. Okay, which means what? It means that it's going to keep growing and producing fruit up until it's frosted out. A determinate tomato, like a beefsteak tomato, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. only has a certain number mm -hmm. of fruit. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So if you start pruning, your determinate mm. tomato, you're taking off your fruit. Okay. This tomato, yeah. you see all these little doodads here? The little, the little things in the middle? Yeah. Those little suckers can come out. You can pinch those out if you want. Okay. Some people don't touch their tomatoes. Okay, sure. I only touch them if they're getting out of control. Okay. Otherwise, I just let them go. Okay. So if I want to... And I'm... 
have an, I have my soil here. My soil consists of my own garden soil, mm -hmm. some potting mixture, okay, some manure, and it's dried and old. Yeah, <laughs> not fresh. Not fresh. Don't yeah. ever use fresh manure. You'll, okay, it will burn your plants. Oh yeah, chemical. Exactly. Yeah. I am not putting any fertilizer in here. Okay. I don't want to shock my poor baby going mm -hmm. in and say, grow. Yeah. You know, I want to give him a little bit of time. And depending, now you said this was a miniature plant. Yes. So is this probably too big for what it needs to be or a good this size? Will, this will be okay for this particular plant. Okay. This one here. Yeah. Has to have a big barrel. Okay. If I'm going to get a nice amount of fruit out okay. of it. Or if you're in a garden, you want to have a nice depth yes. of now, soil. Yes. Now all of these plants that are in the pot, miniature. Well, they they have the tiny patio type tomatoes. Okay. My tomato that has the big tomatoes yeah. is in the ground at the back by the chickens. Okay. Now there are three here, I think. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try and tease this out because I don't want them all. Okay, now, would you recommend for people at home to be doing this or leave it to the professionals? What happened here is that somebody gave me this seed on a paper towel and mm -hmm. I couldn't get it off the paper towel, so I planted the paper towel. Oh, okay. That, all the seeds came up at the same time. Okay, gotcha. When you plant your plant, you put one seed per cell in there. Okay. Now, you see I've got my plant here. Mm -hmm. Lots of roots. Okay. Now, I'm going to take off these branches here. Ah, okay. Right here. Yeah. So you want to get it nice and deep. Because everywhere I did that, mm -hmm. the roots are going to come. Mm. Because if you plant before, the next day it's fallen over because it's so wobbly, this will give it lots of stability. Okay, excellent. Good tip. So I put it right in here. All the way down. Ooh. Make sure it's nice and cozy in there. There we go. So you go. want it quite deep in there. Yes, so yeah. it's gone all the way down. Okay. I give it a bit of water, of course. Always water your plants in the pots because they can't reach down for more water like the plants in the ground. Okay. And definitely have um, pots that have the holes at the bottom. Oh yes, you must have yeah. drainage. Drainage, yeah. You must have drainage, otherwise it's going to okay. rot, and you don't want stuff like that happening. Okay. Now the other thing, if I had one with me, I'd probably put a marigold in with it. Okay. How come? Because they attract very beneficial insects, and they attract pollinators, and you want pollinators when your tomatoes start to blossom. Right, so then they uh, pollinate and make the flowers, I guess? Yes, right here. The flower's going to come out of this tomato. Okay. And I would really like to have a pollinator in there pollinating mm. my tomato. So, and I so have, the, the I marigold have the, attracts the bees, which do the pollinating. Well, the bees, hoverflies, oh. beetles. There are many, many types of pollinators. Okay. It also attracts a kind of a tiny parasitic wasp that cleans up your tomato plant. Well, it takes care of some of the stuff that gets onto your tomato plants. Some of those nasty bugs. Okay, so some of the bugs are actually good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're oh, not yes. all bad. <laughs> no, no, we have many, many good bugs. Okay. And, and there are a number of beetles that are amazing pollinators. And we want to be sure not to just kill everything. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, the big thing is a lot of times people think, oh, I'll plant marigolds and then I won't have any bugs. Well, there is no magic plant out there that's going to keep all your bugs away. <laughs> yeah. But that magic plant, the marigold, is going to bring bugs in. It's going to right. bring in beneficial insects. And this insects. one's a marigold? Yeah, that's yep. a marigold. Okay. And you want to have that happen. Okay. Yeah, we want the bugs because it sounds yes. like the bugs are doing good things. Yes. And you don't just need to keep yourself to marigolds. You can put any number of edible flowers into your vegetable garden. They will act as uh, pollinators, and they'll um, and you can eat them a lot of them later. Okay. You can even eat marigolds, but I I find them a little big, so I wouldn't. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so why don't we continue on this journey with the tomatoes? So we planted okay. our seedling, and yes. then our seedling is going to actually probably end up like this. 
this yeah. or ish. Yes. Do you recommend cages? I one the ones in the pot I like to have them in cages simply because I am not uh, I'm not one to prune suckers. So this thing okay. is going to Does it have suckers on it? Yes it does. Can you show us what that looks like? Well it's, it's just or, like, like the other one I showed you with when when you get across where are we over here? Yeah. <laughs> It now I put you under pressure here to yes, find one. Yes, I gotta find one. Oh, here we go. See right in here, this little guy in the middle here. Okay. He could come out if I wanted. Okay, so that's not really like this is a this might end up having flowers. Yes. But this little thing is not growing anymore. It will have flowers or, too. This is an indeterminate tomato, so it gets okay. covered in flowers. It's just that some people like to take off the suckers so that you put more power back into the plant. For your fruit oh okay and things like that. okay because then because right because the nutrients will have to go to this guy exactly. but it doesn't need the nutrients it doesn't necessarily okay. but you know i don't really fuss with them i just sort of let them you go. just let them go okay. yeah i do but yes. if people maybe want to have bigger not necessarily tomatoes, or not necessarily bigger i guess it depends on the breed but like yeah uh, it might i think it's a personal choice okay. it's tidier okay it's easier to look after it's bushier, it's easier to access. Because okay. the one thing you don't want, and the mm -hmm. one time I do take things out, is if, if it's getting really, really tight in there with no airflow, mm. that's not good for your plants. Okay. That's really not good for your so plants. So it sounds like it kind of depends on maybe how your plant is in your garden, yeah. how big it's getting, what other things might be around it, yeah. if you have a cage or not. So there's yeah. various factors well, that would determine you whether you're, how you're in, doing it. You can put in uh, stakes. The stakes, yeah. And you just use something very soft, a soft cloth to tie them on with. Mm -hmm. Because if you use string or something like that, you can cut through the tomato. Oh, okay. One thing I meant to, to point out yeah. when, I, when I planted this, if this was in the ground instead of a pot, okay. I would take one of these. Oh. This is a toilet paper roll. Mm -hmm. And I take it like that. Let's put that back in my pocket. Look at you with your apron and I bag love of aprons tricks with pocket. <laughs> yeah. It's like Christmas every time you put it on. I see that. Now, on the ground, mm -hmm. your tomato is very susceptible to something called cutworm. Okay. The cutworm comes along and it will curl itself around the bottom of the stem, mm -hmm. suck the sap mm. out of the, and, and your tomato just falls right over and it's gone. Okay. It's just this simple little thing, a little collar on, just from okay. a toilet paper roll. And you roll. kind of stick that in the dirt? Yeah. There oh. you go. And See, the worm the cut, won't be able to get it? No, because he okay. has to curl around the stem and he can't curl around and the And it roll. won't come from the bottom? No. Okay. No. So that's, that's just a prevention. I'm sure you've got people who go out one day and all of their tomatoes are flopped mm -hmm. over and cutworms are horrible creatures mm -hmm. for that. Really bad. Uh, so you want to talk about some care tips maybe in terms of uh, how like well, now watering or I don't know like all the... You tell me what, when, how do people need to best take care of their tomato plants? Here, um, especially the ones in pots, mm -hmm. they ha you really have to watch for water. Okay. If, if you if you are sporadic with your water, uh, you're not going to get a really good tomato. You need to be constant, and you know they need to be well watered every day if they're in a pot. Usually, even if they've had rain. Okay. If they've had rain, you go in with your finger mm -hmm. and up to about this knuckle. Okay. If it's wet, great. Okay. But if it's dry from like here up, okay. no, you need to water. They have to be wet all the way to your knuckle okay. in order to have had a really good drink. Okay. And also, you don't want to be watering way up here with all the water coming down. Mm. That's just wasting. It's just evaporating. It's not going anywhere. Okay. <laughs> your, your best bet is to, to yeah. water right close to the earth if you can. Okay, so either with your hose or with a uh, watering can, can or something like that. Okay. If you are watering from your house, mm -hmm. um, you need to be aware that if you're on city water, there's stuff in your water. Mm. A lot of a lot of people find they, they get this sort of crustiness on the top of the soil. That often happens, just mineral stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you wanna let your water sit for 24, 48 hours before you use it. 
if you have a small garden, mm -hmm. it's really worth it just to use rainwater or okay. water that has sat around for a while. So maybe for people, it would be good for people to get one of the rain barrels? Yes, yeah. definitely. Okay. I have two of them. I just yeah. love them. Also, um, uh, if you have a water softener, you, you don't want to put water softener salt on your garden. Salt will kill everything. So you want to be very aware that you're using the bypass valve to water your garden. That okay. Way. Um, I feed my garden, mm -hmm. especially my tomatoes, about mm -hmm. once a week. Okay. With a very weak uh, formula of fish emulsion. Which emulsion? Fish emulsion. Yes. Squishy okay. fishy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that something that people can buy at yes, like a anywhere. garden center? Yes, anywhere. Any of the garden centers will have okay. it. Fish emulsion, kelp fertilizer, mm -hmm. um, but because I'm organic, because mm -hmm. like I'm on mm -hmm. Monarch Watch, right, so yeah. I, <laughs> I have, I am definitely organic. Yeah. Um, I just put in a, a little bit, like a capful or so, into my watering can, and I water with that regularly. That gives a little boost. Okay. If you are using a chemical fertilizer, mm -hmm. read the directions carefully because if you use too much, you will burn the plant. Don't think that because you want to have a nice big plant, if you give it mm. more to eat, it'll happen. Mm. No. Also, you want to make sure that your fertilizer is not high in nitrogen. If you're trying to get things like tomatoes, too much nitrogen, you'll get all these leaves, but mm. you won't get as much fruit. <laughs> okay. That's the other thing. Right. Um, what about if people, I've seen a lot of times like, like a yellowing of the leaves. Oh, tomatoes get all sorts of yeah. fancy things. Okay. Yes. They get blight. They get late blight and early blight and there's there, a full there, moon out tonight <laughs> blight. <laughs> are there things people can do? Does well, it one indicate thing like I'm too much water or not enough water? Or? When, when you're watering, try mm -hmm. not to, to water so that the dirt splashes up on the leaves. Okay. That is something that will kills the leaves, it makes it difficult for the plant to breathe. And some people will put uh, layers of straw around their tomato, like a mulch, mm -hmm. so that the water will go directly into that. That's actually a nice idea. Okay, so doing some yeah. sort of a mulch. The other thing on is, top. if if your tomato, often your tomatoes are exposed to diseases if you bought them somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a late like problem myself. I grow my tomatoes from seed mm -hmm. and I never ever ever compost the tomatoes because if oh. there's any bit of blight mm. it'll stay in your compost and then when you're using your compost you're adding it right back oh, okay. into the whole thing. So what I do is I put my tomato, uh, I either put them in the green bin or I put them in a black uh, garbage bag and let the sun melt them all down. <laughs> uh, my compost isn't hot enough oh, to okay. destroy the, the blight, okay. so I have to do something like that. Okay. They Any get, other uh, uh, tomato stuff that yeah, you should know they, about? Well, one thing is, if, if you're lucky, you'll get a tomato horn worm. Okay. Uh, what is that? <laughs> well, it's about this long and about that wide, and it's green, and it's massive, and it'll take out Oh, a good couple of branches of your tomato, but it turns into a huge, beautiful mop. So, <laughs> okay. What I, so, all I'm saying is sometimes <laughs> you need to make sacrifices. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you want to share about tomatoes before we move on to the eggplants? Um, sometimes you'll find growing your tomatoes that they'll split. Um, uh, that's, that's when they get too much water too fast. That's why I say try to do a regular watering with them. Mm -hmm. Like don't let them totally dry out and then soak them. Okay. However, <laughs> if we get a big rainstorm, mm -hmm. it's not your fault. Right. You can still cut off the split part and just chop up what's left. Okay. So in terms of watering, it sounds like basically every day is the most ideal. Check and see. Or check you, to see. You don't want to overwater. Okay. And you'll know that with your oh, finger yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Test this with the finger. Rain, you probably don't need to necessarily you don't. water the next yeah. day. Okay, but yeah. we should be checking every day in yeah. the fingers in the dirt. Good for your body. It is. Um, Microbes. Yes. Yay. And uh, and then if it's dry, then we water. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. I love that. That's so many great tips that I know people <laughs> will be able to implement right away. 
Um, I know we do have some questions about tomatoes, but I think we'll do all the questions at the end. Sure. Uh, for eggplants, we want to talk about eggplants. That's another uh, Italian it very type of, much uh, vegetable. Is. Now, I don't have a lot of luck with eggplants because I'm a little bit cooler here. I'm, I'm next to a swamp and um, I have not had a great deal of luck with them. So this year I thought I'll try them in a different place. So I have one in the ground here, that's this one right here. And I have one in a pot. And what they need And is, are you testing out pot yes, versus I'm gonna see, uh, I'm gonna dirt? Yeah. For next year, which one I... Because I'd like to grow them. Mm -hmm. But so far, everywhere I've put them, uh, I haven't had a lot of luck. So I'm uh, I'm still in the experimental All right, well, stage. you'll have to keep us updated I on will. Uh, which one's working better. Yeah. I feel like they're like racing against each other. They are racing against each other. What they need is, is a good soil and they need... Um, they needed a good head start, which I gave them. Make sure you don't plant them out until maybe the first week of June, not like late May, like some of the vegetables can do. Right, because I think tomatoes, you can generally start late, late May. Late May, they can, they can go out. However, mm -hmm. I start them in March or April That's right. inside. Yes, okay. Yeah. Uh, what else for eggplants? Uh, in terms of the soil, if people are using pots, is it a similar It is a similar composition, mm -hmm. yes. This one has the same one. Um, my biggest concern is the chipmunks digging in the soil, mm -hmm. but it got it got large enough that now they're staying out of it. So. Okay. Then fingers and, crossed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is it the same kind of watering strategy? Yes. Yes. Definitely. Okay. Anything else in particular about eggplants? Are they a little they would prefer or? They would prefer a more sheltered space. I have them here, which is more sheltered than where I had them before. And if they still don't do well, I have one more place that I may be <laughs> able to put them. Okay, because I know tomatoes really like the sun. Yes, they do. And so most vegetables really like the sun. Oh, okay. Most of them. Uh, but for the eggplants, are they still liking the sun, but maybe just not as much of other, like wind and No, they things, don't like the or... wind. And they definitely don't like anything like frost or even a hint of frost. They're not... They're, you know, if you think of it, they're growing in Italy. I was going to say, they're probably growing in southern Italy, which, where which it's I think warm. is a little bit warmer than where we are. Definitely. You know? These days, for sure, anyway. Um, can we talk a little bit about uh, container gardening and yeah. maybe some tips for a lot of the people watching who live in maybe more urban settings? Yes. Uh, or maybe just want to do like a rate. I've seen a lot now with raised beds. Yes. Uh, people are doing that. Definitely. So what are some tips that people need to, or things people need to consider if they want to do a container garden? Okay, well, first of all, if you are in an apartment building, you need to be sure that your, your plant with soil is not too heavy for your balcony. So you really want to check that out. There may be rules from your landlord or something like that. Mm -hmm. You can get um, lighter soil. Like, um, okay. Oh, pearl light. And now, and I guess if, like you're, that. if we're talking, if people are really doing a quite a big garden, exactly. that's going to get heavy. If you want yeah. one pot mm -hmm. that's going to work for you, lettuce in a pot. Epic. Okay. Yes, I have it all over the place in pots. And do you generally re recommend starting from seed? I do. It's mm -hmm. so easy. Yeah. I started. I have it in a hanging basket in in the back. I have it by the back porch. Um, it's also something that won't germinate in the heat. So if you've got a balcony mm -hmm. that is cool and shady, you okay. can grow lettuce from seed. Okay. Yes, and you can have your own little salad in there. Okay, so if we, let's say that's a great point. So if we have a shady balcony, yeah. what do we want to focus on? Not basil, because I know basil really likes the sun. It really sun. likes the sun. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but you can uh, but you definitely can lettuce. grow what lettuce. Else? You can grow spinach. Okay. Um, you can even try some carrots. Now, they'll take a little longer, mm -hmm. but they'll be a little sweeter. Okay. Yeah, because they've taken such a long time. And, and things like carrots can stay in the ground or in a pot mm -hmm. uh, past a few frosts. Okay. What about okay. beans, like green beans? Um, Is that not so great for shady? <laughs> it, I've, I've done it. Yeah. Um, yeah, why not? I mean, you uh, could try, right? Yeah, you could try. The one neat thing, if you've got a balcony, mm -hmm. is to maybe plant some pole beans, which are climbers. So you could yeah. let the, well, the beans what, climb that's up, what I was and, then, and then they, they'd all hang down like yeah. that, and they'd be just lovely. Yeah. You can get purple beans that do that. Oh, okay. There's a hyacinth yeah. bean. Lovely purple flowers and purple beans. Just beautiful. Yeah. And tasty. I'm thinking that would be really pretty too, right? Yeah. And 
and you could even make like a little more of a privacy screen exactly. depending on the type of balcony <laughs> you have. Yeah. Uh, and then we, so basically, other than lettuce and, and the carrots and spinach, all the other vegetables really like a sunny well, space. Yes, yeah. yes, they do. They okay. do well in sunshine. Mm -hmm. Another one that you get away with is kale and um, uh, Swiss chard For more in, shady? The, in a okay. shadier area. So basically, Again, it's just going to yeah. take a longer time. Okay, so if you have a sunny balcony, you're pretty much good to you go are with good everything. You are good to go with that, yes. Uh, same kind of cons. Is there anything in particular in terms of having it in a container that people need to... I know it's you mentioned about drainage. drainage. Definitely drainage. Mm -hmm. You want to be sure that it's not sitting in wet. So just okay. because it drains and you're sitting in a saucer, mm -hmm. don't leave it sitting in the saucer if there's a puddle of water underneath it. Which will happen if it rains. Mm. People forget that the rain comes and sits in the saucer and, and your, your plant's floating away on the top. So definitely drainage mm -hmm. uh, and water, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. Then the next thing you want to do is, um, for example, if you were planting marigolds in with that, mm -hmm. you want a dead head. You want to be sure to take off any dead flowers in order to get more flowers out of your plant. And how do we know a flower is dead? Um, like, is it obvious? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, it definitely okay. is. <laughs> like, none of yours are right now. No, I'm not. Those yes, look great. I'm too quick on the dead head, oh, okay. I guess. <laughs> Now, but you do not take any flowers off of your vegetables because as the flower dies, the fruit is formed. Now, what about basil? Because I know oh, when your okay. basil goes to now, seed, basil, then it you do is... not. No, no, no. So what you want to do <laughs> is 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 keep clipping your basil before it even thinks of going to seed. Okay, because basically yeah. once it's already started, you're it's it tastes it's so bitter. So bitter, yeah, yeah exactly. It's very okay. Bitter. So we need to be on top of the basil. Yes, definitely. Prune, prune, mm -hmm. prune your basil. Mm -hmm. Use that all the time. Okay. Is there any other um, now, herbs that are yes, like that? Sage is, is is very tasty. It doesn't. It doesn't really matter if it goes uh, to to okay. flowers. What or about not. oregano? Um, lawn is oregano. Oh. It grows better than the grass, so I let it spread, and now okay. it smells like pizza every time I cut it. <laughs> um, so did that I, one go to seed though? Or? It does go to seed. Okay. It does. It does go to flower. Mm -hmm. I think again, like the like the basil, it, it probably would prefer to be picked or anything is tastier earlier really okay you know things yeah. like that so don't be stingy more yeah. will grow yeah use it while it's well, there and while then it's fresh. if you're going to grow something like cilantro you've got about two weeks and then it's done oh so okay good to know when you get cilantro mm -hmm. you you put your cilantro in it's up plant another row oh and it's up Plant another row, so you're doing this successive planting. Okay. Otherwise, you will have to wait forever for the next cilantro to come. It comes very easy from seed, but um, you don't you don't want to eat the good at all. Okay. When we were here before, uh, we talked about the lemon lemon balm. Oh, yeah. Was it? Can you share? Because you had some great little um, tips about wonderful. that. Here we go. Lemon balm is in the mint. It does look like mint. You, you don't want to really put it in the ground unless you want a lot of lemon <laughs> balm. <laughs> I like to leave it in a okay. pot. So it's like mint where it will just explode and yeah. spread everywhere. It has a very, um, it, because it's so citrusy, mm -hmm. if you rub it on yourself, you know, it's, it's sort of like having a citronella candle all over you. And I like to think that mosquitoes are avoiding me that way. I think it's a power of positive <laughs> um, But this stuff, if, if you put it in a pitcher of water and you leave that pitcher in the sunshine for the day mm -hmm. and then you come back and you pour, you pour it through a sieve sort of thing and you can drink it, it's the most delicious lemon drink. Okay. This makes, if it's dried, it makes delicious um, lemon tea. And um, some people will candy the leaves and put it on cakes and things. And it's, it's just a yummy, yummy herb. I just love it. And it's lemon balm. B-A-L-M. -L -M. Yes, and people can get it generally anywhere? Generally, yes. Um, however, this year, I'm finding things are sparse. You probably would do better with an online catalog. 
-hmm. And again, start from seed or? Uh, no, um, if you can get the plant, it's easier. It will start from seed, it's a bit tricky. Okay. And you can order them from, and it will come to you already grown? Some you companies will do that. Okay. You can usually find them online. Okay. Or a better thing to do is to call your local nursery and see if they have it in. Oh, perfect. Some yeah, of okay. them do. People carry All it. All I'm saying is that because of the situation this year, mm -hmm. you want to sort of call ahead or you're going to be disappointed on the lot of them. Okay. Awesome. Well, we have some questions from our audience. Uh, so Don has asked us, uh, he said he's interested in growing asparagus. Ah. But he finds it a bit daunting as he understands it takes a few years to get going. Yes. So that is true. Asparagus and what is, are some tips or tricks for him? Asparagus is easy, but you have to have a lot of time. So so, so the first the first year you're going to sort of you, you get an asparagus crown um, in the early spring. That's when they're available. I would I would actually suggest you scope it out at the farmers markets to see if you've got anybody there who would be selling it. And you can sort of plant them in a trench and then the first year they, they will grow and sometimes you'll even get, you know, a few stalks, but you'll only harvest a week's worth. The okay. second year you'll get more, you can harvest for does it regrow? Yes. Okay. You can harvest for maybe two weeks. And it'll take four to five years before you've got a really well-established oh cut. <laughs> okay. Now what happens is yeah. after you finish the new asparagus, these lovely lacy things come up. Oh. Yeah. And you leave that alone. Okay. Okay. And they'll wave around and they'll look lovely. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then what you can do is as they yellow in the fall, you can cut them down. And then the following year, your asparagus will start to come up. Okay. So would you recommend asparagus be better than for a garden? Or could you do it in a container? Oh, I would say garden. A garden, okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you'd have a lot of luck in a container with asparagus. Also, uh, a lot of the local farmers markets, the local farmers sell asparagus uh, for not not a lot of money, and it's delicious. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> not a lot of work. <laughs> right. So, maybe growing asparagus isn't the most easiest thing to do unless you have a lot of patience. Yes, but if you have a patch established, it's mm -hmm. amazing. It's wonderful. Right. You share it with your neighbors and your okay. friends, and it's so, t so tasty. Right, but you're basically, in your garden, you're keeping the asparagus in the same spot yeah. year after year. You're it's actually growing year. until yeah. you're five years when you finally get a good harvest. Yes. <laughs> well, you'll get a harvest. Yeah. Oh, okay. You just it's get a, a better one. one. Yes, yes, yeah. of course. Okay, Don has another question. Uh, thank you, Don, for sharing your questions. Uh, he wants to know about growing grapes this ah. far north and if there's any specific varieties uh, that are particularly hardy and easy to grow. I went on a wine thingy at our local winery up here mm -hmm. and he talked about the grapes that he was using. I know in our area, Concord grapes are probably, well, I, li I find them very tasty and I have wild grapes here that I make jelly of. I would highly recommend you go to www.grapegrowersofontario.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that's where you would get a very knowledgeable opinion on what to grow. Unless you go and you t you talk to your local uh, wine expert, mm -hmm. they might be able to give you some ideas because grapes can be very specific to areas. Mm -hmm. So right here, I could probably grow the Concords, but not some of recommended grapes because I'm just a bit zone cooler. Okay, so it might depend even in Ottawa itself. Even in Ottawa. Ottawa is different in, areas. In all sorts of, and mm -hmm. your own garden has different spots. You have a hot spot, you have a cold spot. Okay. So, you know. So even depending on where you want to plant exactly, it. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. You're far more ahead uh, going to someone who uh, specializes in the grapes uh, and doing research because uh, then that way you get a better yield. Okay, excellent advice. Mariana asks, we talked about basil, uh, which is a huge fan favorite for Italians and, and everyone else. Yes. Uh, so, and I've had this problem too, of keeping fresh basil alive in the winter. Yeah. Do you have any suggestions? Is it kind of not really possible? What are, I know, especially there's a sun factor that probably plays into it. Um, is there, Anything that people can do to keep well, their basil alive in the fall or winter time. If you have grow lights, 
you probably have a, a better idea but I would also put little dishes of water around for some humidity mm. because our houses are very dry in the winter time so you know it wants it, it think about you know if I were on the Mediterranean <laughs> what, what would it feel like right, you know yeah it's definitely light mm -hmm. uh, from what I understand hydroponically it grows mm. quite well yes like you know, unless yeah. you have a <laughs> yeah I, I, I actually have a tower garden at my house and it does grow well yeah. with the hydroponics and with the lights yeah yeah that that is what I would recommend because yeah. I think overall um, it, it's very tricky because you get cold air blasts coming in windows so growing it on a, a shelf is not necessarily an easy thing to do really have to have a setup for it. Okay, great. That's, I mean, that's the reality, right? Yeah. So it's probably not the answer Marianne wants to hear, but it's, you know, what yeah. it is, right? So, uh, Mathieu asks about book recommendations for starting a mid-sized vegetable garden. Well, I, I gave you a few books, my, a few of my favorite books. Mm -hmm. Now, they don't necessarily go into uh, vegetable gardens. It's about plants overall. But, um, I would say if you get anything by the publisher Harrow Smith, but my hippie roots are showing. <laughs> <laughs> um, they have they have some great vegetable books as well. Um, I think your best bet is actually the um, um, the catalogs that come in the winter time. Bessie seeds, Stoke seeds, all of these various catalogs that we have. If you go through and say, okay, I'd like to grow this, this, and this, they have details on how long it takes, what you need to do to grow it, things like that. Do your research and grow what you want to grow. Mm -hmm. Make a decision of, you know, where's my light? Where's my this? Where's my... You're all set. Lois Hole has a vegetable um, gardening book as well. Mm -hmm. And any book by Lois Hole to me is well worth uh, reading. Okay. She's really, really knowledgeable. And you did provide us with a ton of books and you know, we're gonna be sharing that with our sure, audience sure. as well. And I, I see if I can find some of my old vegetable books. I've got, I'm not a very round. Yeah, we have another question from Cynthia who is asking about planting um, bushes or flowers or edibles near the house and if there's anything that is going to be causing uh, roots to grow and damage the foundation. If you're planting edible stuff like vegetable gardens near the house, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, however, I would stay away from things like mint, lemon balm, anything that has one of those spready roots because it'll take over your garden and might even go into the foundation. Um, I wouldn't plant fruit trees near the house. I wouldn't plant any... Uh, bushes. Um, as you can see, that tree I have near my house is not in a good spot, okay. but oh well. Yeah. <laughs> got a little chipmunk there on the floor. Oh my too. goodness, I have birds friend. and chipmunks and everybody here. Yeah. Um, okay, did we get any questions from our Facebook audience? No? All right. So those are all the questions that we have. Is there anything else that you wanted to add that we maybe missed talking? Oh! We have a question. Talk about, oh, talk about netting to help with the chipmunks and oh, squirrels. Oh, yeah, it's a really, really bad year for chipmunks and squirrels. So all of my pots, I will, I, I will come out and find that they've, all they've been dug up, you know, and that's when I started putting bird netting down. On my, on my peppers, for example, I had holes in here over and over and over again, and once I put the netting in, then I was fine. But and is that, do you find that this netting, like, it's not too, like I found with the squirrels, they, no matter the size of the netting, they seem to get in there. I don't know if you maybe don't have as much, of, we have a squirrel problem downtown. Oh, okay. Um, maybe out here you don't have as it's many squirrels. It's chipmunks out here. Okay. Yeah. Now, I planted my peas and they didn't come up. And that's when I discovered that as I was planting them, the chipmunk mm. was behind me. Well, they're really big chipmunks here too. Yes, they um, are. But this size of a netting seems to work for chipmunks. It, yes, it okay. does. It does. I can tell you from experience that this is too big of a hole. A squirrel will definitely get in that. Oh, that dear me. Um, so yeah, for the, the squirrels, uh, I find if you can do like some kind of caging yeah. around, yeah. that's going to be actually the most ideal. They well, are, there is they get into everything. They got into our fig tree. We had fig trees oh. in containers and they were just in the dirt like for no reason. 
and they well, weren't they getting do, at anything. They do bury things in there. Oh, maybe and that's also, what it was. if they are thirsty and you have water, your tree, they'll dig down and keep the moisture. Oh, you know, okay. that's one of the I reasons they were just I have things pesky. like this. <laughs> this is one of my little water spots here. There's water in there, and so the toads and the uh, frogs and even the squirrels and chipmunks can have a drink if they need anything. Excellent. Any last words? Any final, you well, know, just, you know, advice to our, our wannabe or would be or hope to be great gardeners? Well, don't be afraid to try things. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I can tell you that when I first joined Master Gardeners, I, I thought I, I knew a lot. I don't. <laughs> the more I'm a master gardener, the more I realize there's so much more to learn. But the way to learn is to try things. So if it doesn't work one way, it's going to work another way. So you put your junior scientist hat on mm -hmm. there and, and try it. You can grow almost anything in a pot. You can even grow uh, vine crops. They can vine all the way up a tomato cage. Mm -hmm. So give it a shot. And don't give up. That's excellent advice. Oh, don't advice. ever give up. Yeah, don't and maybe even up. talk to people like I know you said you're master gardeners. Yeah. You guys are available. Yeah. If people have questions, if they have specific, yeah. uh, it, whether it's related to vegetables or like you said, the flowers, yeah. other things like that. People can come master to you guys and get good advice. Yeah, Master Gardeners of Otto Carlton are online at Facebook and, and we have an email helpline. Um, and they're always willing to answer questions. Excellent. Amazing. Well, thank you, Judith, so You're much. Welcome. It's been such a pleasure. I hope. Our viewers have just taken in all this information and uh, Judith has agreed to make herself available so if you want to ask her questions you can get in touch with her through us and I'll put you in contact with her. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you later. Bye!